What's going on everybody? I'm Mark Sertica from E3 Rehab inside Therex Performance in Yorba Linda, California with Quinn Hennick, doctor of physical therapy, owner and founder of Clinical Athlete and Olympic weightlifting expert. Is that, oh, is that accurate? Thanks Mark, yeah, accurate. Uh, today, Quinn is going to teach me how to snatch. A lot of videos on YouTube are titled how to snatch for beginners, but oftentimes there aren't beginners demonstrating them. I've never snatched before. I didn't practice before today. I didn't try to improve my mobility or positioning. So this is a true beginner's guide. I don't know if you foresee any limitations or barriers in terms of my range of motion or just sheer lack of athleticism. Yeah, I do see barriers, but that's perfect because that represents most people. And it's funny because my goal, knowing that was your background and knowing you were gonna come in with that, my goal for the video is to take down this perceived uh, allure of the snatch and clean and jerk and the weightlifting movements in general as something that people just can't do. I hear it all the time. You know, I'm, if I'm doing snatches in the gym or something like that, and somebody comes up to me, oh, I could never do that. Those look so cool, but I'm just not coordinated enough or I'm not mobile enough or I could never do that. Yes, you can. They're, these movements, they're not to be put on some pedestal. Yes, it's a sport in the Olympics, but so are a lot of sports that people do. If you're really, really good, that takes you to a certain level, but that doesn't mean you can't start. And so I think that's the goal for today is, is taking down that, that mystique that doesn't actually exist and to uh, take the barrier away for people so they can try these things because they're super fun. And then what do you think about my hip? So as a lot of the audience knows, I've had a hip replacement for over 14 years. You see any issues with that? Nope. Do you squat? I do. Sometimes, sometimes more split squats, but but your hips goes up and down? Goes up and down. We're good. And that's gonna be the other thing too. We'll probably get into this a little bit more. Uh, we're gonna work on the snatch today, and people think that a squat is required for the snatch. We see these perfect overhead squats on Instagram. They look so nice, and people say, well, I can't do that, so I can't snatch. A squat is actually not a prerequisite to snatch. It's not part of the rules of the sport, and it's not required to put that bar over your head and we'll get into that a little bit more to talk about the nuance and what exactly that means but that's just one more thing that people think that is a barrier for them that's not cool let's get into it okay so we're going to break the movement down into three portions and we're going to prioritize those portions maybe a little bit differently than people often think so we've got the squat portion of the movement and the pull portion of the movement the bar has to come off the floor and get over our head somehow, so we have to pull on it. And then the overhead position, just the kind of supportive position and organizing your body to be able to support the load and have that position be sustainable over time. So those are three things, overhead position, the pull, and the squat. Most people prioritize the squat, kind of like what we talked about before, because they think, okay, the overhead squat's the hardest part, let me do that. But often they prioritize depth of the squat and sacrifice and forsake their overhead position. And so, the, you know, the, the part of the lift that actually holds the weight over your head against gravity, say, to heck with that, I want a lower squat. We're gonna actually gonna flip those priorities. We're gonna prioritize the overhead position, then the pull, because we've gotta get that bar overhead somehow. Then we'll work on establishing, maintaining your overhead position and developing your overhead squat. So that's gonna be our priority. So overhead position. We've got our trusty dowel rod here. Okay. We're gonna talk about grip. Now, everybody's grip width is gonna be a little different. So I'm gonna give you just the universal, most people start here and understand that a lifter's grip evolves over time. Even the most elite lifters, their grips will change. They'll go a little wider, a little bit more narrow over time. Sometimes it's even a subconscious change. Usually not drastic. We're talking like the width of a finger on both sides, either wider or more narrow but just know that it can change. But in general, grab this, and I want you to dip your hips and your knees kind of like you're doing a counter movement jump. And you'll often hear this position referred to as the power position. Colloquial term, power, we're not talking about necessarily the scientific uh, term, but it's basically the same as the isometric mid-thigh pull where somebody can create a lot of force into the ground. So that's gonna be the position that we establish your grip in. I want you to uh, adjust your hand so that this bar is kind of in the crease of your hip. Good. 
So that's gonna be where we start. Now, you might ask, and this dowel, we are, you know, we're at the end, but I don't want you to go any wider, but if you, on the barbell, you could go wider. So people might ask, well, wouldn't the widest place that I could hold the bar just be better? Wider is always better. There's often diminishing returns, and you can experience this yourself. Grab a bar. If you're not a super tall person, grabbing a bar from collar to collar, number one, you might give yourself a haircut, putting a bar over your head. But number two, it may not feel that strong overhead. You may not feel like you can really push up on the bar. So there's some type of threshold or diminishing returns in terms of how wide you go. So you just have to play with that. Now, in terms of how narrow you go, there's no rule. You can grab it like a clean grip or a conventional deadlift grip. You could go super narrow. But if we're talking about the snatch in the realm of performance, the more narrow you hold the bar, go ahead and see how it drops it down. Now you've increased the distance that you have to pull that bar up. So you're unlikely to be able to lift the most weight if you go super narrow. So the answer is somewhere in between. And this is kind of our rule of thumb to start you at some arbitrary point, but I think it works for most people. So that's grip width. Yep. Good with that? Got it. Okay, put that bar over your head. I don't care how you get it there. And then actually sit on that box. All the way down? Just yeah, just chill. So I'm having him sit on the box so we can take the lower body out of the equation right now, we can just focus on the belly button up. Because remember, we said we're prioritizing your overhead position. Yep. We also anchor the lower body. So really the only thing that we're getting movement from is the shoulders and it just gives him something, you know, less things to think about and have to worry about right now. So, shoulder position. With beginners, giving you a million cues is, can be paralyzing. It can be paralyzing for you, me as a coach too. Could I say, I want you to uh, push up on the bar, internally rotate your shoulders, externally rotate your wrists, all these things, your mind's gonna blow. I'm gonna be frustrated, you're gonna be frustrated because you're not gonna get it. So we're just going to very simply put you in different positions and then we're gonna put you in the middle and I'm gonna test that position and then we're gonna go from there. So I want you to, yeah, didn't say a word. I just kind of pulled his shoulders in. So we'll call this an internally rotated position front of the shoulders are kind of poking out the front. Now, so that's the extreme in that direction, kind of rolling the shoulder forward. So crease of the elbow goes forward and down in that, in that sense. Now I'm gonna take you the other direction. Okay, that's the extreme the other way. So now we're taking the point of the elbow and pointing that way forward, kind of armpits forward position. Now, I want you to find somewhere in the middle. Perfect, right there, okay? That's gonna be where we start. Now, to test that a little bit, we can see from the side, I'm just gonna push straight down. I want you to oppose my force. Perfect. If I feel like he's in a good, stable position, what I'm looking for is that the orientation of the shoulder doesn't change as I push down. You're just opposing that force, as opposed to, rest for a second if your shoulders are, shake it out as opposed to if I were to push his shoulders down and he starts changing his position, okay? Yeah. Can you go back to that first position where you were kind of poking the front of your shoulders out to the people in the camera? Now I'm gonna push straight down. And I'm, first of all, I'm pushing the same force and I'm, I'm winning. So that's a test as coach athlete is you guys can experiment with different positions, give them that pushing down Q, and you can kind of collaborate, say which one feels stronger, which one feels like you've got a more stable position to be able to pose that force. And so I won't lead with you, but it seemed like when we found that middle ground. It felt more stable for sure. It felt yeah. more stable. Okay, so that's a great starting position. Now, we, the true test is the snatch and putting weight on it and, tr and feeling it over time through hundreds of training sessions and all that stuff. So your overhead position is going to evolve just like your grip evolves, just like your squat stance evolves over time. So none of this is set in stone. But I think that's a great start. If we watch from the side, put it over your head one more time, find that middle position. So we'll just stick with that from now on. Good. The orientation of the bar in relation to his shoulder is right over his upper back. So often what people will do is as they're squatting down, especially, they'll kind of counterbalance themselves by pushing that bar way, way back. Their torso dips and their shoulders go way, way back. Well, you're not gonna be able to support a lot of weight generally with that position. We want this bar to stay right over the upper back. 
as if you took it from a back squat and, and brought it straight up. And from here, I should know, so if we're looking at the camera, if I have a still shot from you from the belly button up and I'm looking at you, hold this bar. I don't know whether you're sitting, I don't know whether you're standing, I don't know whether you're in an overhead squat. It should all look the same. So when people say I don't have the shoulders or shoulder mobility or range of motion to do a snatch, but yet I can get them in this position, I say you actually do have the shoulder range of motion to perform a snatch. What you're lacking is the ability to integrate all of that. But we've established this. Yeah. So in your mind, press save because everything that we do from this point forward, I want you to return to that position. Got it. So that's the idea. We work on the squat and then you start to deviate from that position. We're going to constrain the squat until you can maintain this and reestablish that position as opposed to degrading that position in order to get a lower squat. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Now, the pull. Let's go ahead and stand up for me. And we'll, hey Woo, that box is really heavy. So you don't know that on the camera, but we all talked about how heavy that box was, like 100 pounds. Okay. Remember that overhead position? Yeah. We're just gonna go from the power position. You remember the power position? Perfect. So our shoulders are still kind of over the bar, but we feel like we could jump. So you're in kind of a nice midfoot pressure. You're not way back on your heels because we wouldn't jump like that, but you're also not up on your toes. It's like nice balanced foot position. I want you to put that bar, I want you to push into the floor like you would jump, and I want you to send that bar over your head. Do that again, do that a couple times. One more. Good. Now, this is fun with, I'll take that. When we're teaching something with a dowel rod that doesn't punish mistakes yeah. per se, we can get away with a lot. And that's one of the problems with saying, okay, well, you can't use, you can't use a barbell or you can't use any load until your dowel rod snatch is quote unquote perfect. Well, it's hard to pick up on subtleties because what I saw there is as you were pulling the bar, you created a lot of space between the bar and your body, which you can get away with with this empty PVC or empty dowel rod. You can get away with it even maybe with an empty bar. As the weight gets heavier, the further away from the body that barbell gets, now we've got two systems that we're trying to control. If we can keep that bar as close to our body as possible, now we become one with the bar, we become one system. Our center of mass stays around our base of support. It becomes much easier to complete that lift. So one universal guideline for snatching and cleans is keep the bar as close as possible. So with that in mind, and I'm not gonna cue him, so what I could cue him is elbow position to try to achieve that, but I'm gonna wait on that, and I'm just gonna say, do everything that you just did, but I want you to keep the bar as close as possible to your body, all the way up. Nice. Do that again. Good. Okay, now I will give him a cue. So that was a lot better, bars closer to the body. What I'm gonna have you do now is I want you to take those elbows, point to the elbows, and I want you to send them to the ceiling as you pull the bar overhead, okay? okay? Keep the bar as close as possible, send your elbows to the ceiling. Good. Again. Not bad. One more time. Okay. So what we just saw, you'll see referred to as a muscle snatch. There's a lot of colloquial terms in the sport of weightlifting. A muscle snatch doesn't make a lot of sense if you just think about it at face value. It's like aren't all snatches muscle snatches? You're using your muscles. But the idea is that you're extending your legs and you're sending the bar up and you're not pulling yourself down. It's a great variation to just learn the mechanics of the pull and not have to worry about getting under the bar. Everybody's worried about getting under the bar, but again, we're prioritizing fixating the bar over your head and then how to get it there, the muscle snatch, where we extend the legs but then don't re-bend them is a really nice way to just take all that out of the equation. So I, you were doing that without me even telling you that, so that's good. But see, I'm keeping the bar nice and close, the bar path of an actual snatch 
looks a lot like this. We will extend, and then our feet are move, our feet will move, but the bar stays close and our elbows stay over our wrists until somewhere around here. And then it's this position, which is what we were doing, what Mark was doing during our muscle snatch. We're just sending you all the way up instead of you pulling your body down. But the mechanics of the shoulder are the same. Got it. Um, I, I find that it's helpful to explain and observe what's happening from a body part position or a body part standpoint to say, keep your elbows, your elbows kind of stay over your wrists till about sternum level. And then your wrists turn over. But to cue you to do that is slightly different in, in kind of my mental model of coaching. To say, your elbows will stay over your wrists. Now I want you to pull your elbows to the ceiling. Mm -hmm. So that was the cue. My cue to you was elbows to the ceiling. What actually happens is your elbows stay above your wrists until about sternum level. But that is a lot to think about when you're doing a movement like this. So we try to keep the cues simple. Uh, but does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Okay. So now let's take that, go to your power position. Now we're going to hinge down to below the knee. Take that bar. Good. Now from the side, or yeah, we got lots of cameras here though. So I, we're going to catch it all. Don't worry. That same midfoot pressure, a lot, a lot of times in this position, people will rock way back on their heels, kind of thinking about how they conventionally deadlift. But we've got to send this bar overhead and we've got to jump in order to do that. So we still want to be in that nice balanced foot position. So we'll actually be a little bit more over the bar, shoulders slightly over the bar in this position. And that way, I want you to push with your legs. Yeah, so that's the next move. As opposed to a conventional deadlift, well, where you might kind of pull the hips through as soon as you can. Yeah. You do that in a snatch, a lot of times that's sending the bar forward, okay? So let's get in that position one more time. Now, you might look at this, very nice neutral position. I'm gonna say that the body goes where the eyes go. If we can fixate on a spot that's in front of us throughout the whole lift, we'll tend to have a more vertical controlled pull if you can fixate your gaze. Good. Now from here, I want you to perform a muscle snatch. You're gonna pass through all the same positions that you did before. Nice work. Do it again. Muscle snatch from below the knee is what we call this. Find that balance point. You can kind of like bounce around down there. Oh yeah. Looking like a weightlifter, my friend. One more time. Yep, good. How you feel? Feels good. That's pretty yeah. good, man. Yeah. That's pretty good. Okay. Below the knee again. I want you guys in the audience to note his shoulder level in relation to his hips. Shoulders are slightly higher than hips. Hips slightly higher than knees. You're just going to lower everything down. Don't drop your butt. So think, stand up for a second. Good. So I want you to think about your shoulders and your hips. See this, see this inclination here? See how it's the angle of incline, it doesn't change as you go down to the floor. What you did was you dropped your butt and made it into kind of a squatty thing. Okay, so bar below the knee again. And I want you to just feel where your shoulders are in relation to your hips and just drop everything straight down. Yeah, there you go. That's it. Gotcha. So that's gonna be your snatch and I'm gonna, I'm gonna raise your butt up just a little right there. That's gonna be your snatch starting position when the barbell's on the ground. Now I want you to pass through every position that's we, that we've been through up to this point, perform a muscle snatch. Nice work, do that again. Now uh, stance position, go ahead and, and uh, quarter turn for me so people can see your feet. Quarter, alt face that way. That would have been an eighth turn, I believe. <laughs> First time. So notice his feet. Now his feet are straight ahead and that's fine. 
It's also okay to experiment with multiple variables in your stance. In a, in a snatch especially, because your arms are so wide, you're gonna have a pretty deep hip position. The snatch starting position is not the most comfortable thing in the world. So you can experiment with narrow versus wider feet with a little bit of toe out to give your hips some space. We don't have to experiment with all that right now, but just know, watch lifters and you'll see their, their starting stance look different. Let's see that uh, muscle snatch. Nice. Okay, rest for a second. I mean, that's pretty much the pull in terms of taking the bar from the floor and getting it overhead. Nothing would change if there was weight on the bar, but simply your intent to have to put more force into the ground to create more momentum to send that bar overhead. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Do you want to try it with a bar? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, now we're gonna take exactly what we did with the weightless dowel rod, and we're going to apply it to the barbell. And nothing should change, but everything always changes when you add a little bit of weight. So just a little pro tip for you guys. If, if your gym has a piece of equipment that is something in between a empty dowel rod and a full-sized weightlifting bar, like any even just weighted dowel rod, something, that they can feel, but it's not as heavy as a barbell, that's a great place to start. So uh, just as a tip going forward, but we're gonna start with the bar. And Mark, I just want you to do, uh, you're gonna perform a muscle snatch from that mid shin position, trying to reenact everything you did with the weightless PVC. And I'm not gonna say a word until you uh, show us what you got. Good, do that one more time. The, the smile. <laughs> that's that's the, I don't know. Smile of shame. Right. <laughs> hey, not bad. Not bad at all. Put it down for a second. Rest. The bar gets, the empty bar gets real heavy real fast too. So we'll, I'll, I'll try to remember to give you some rest periods. But now that there's weight on the bar, now we got to bring our legs to the party. Because a snatch is not an upright row. I want you guys to think about the arms as just towing cables. They guide the barbell through the path that's closest to the body, but the momentum is generated by the legs. So when we extend at the very top of that pull, from about here to here, that bar feels should feel weightless. So it's not an active upright row where the all the work is coming from our traps or our shoulders the way that it would be for a strict upright row. The, the position is similar, but the act is a bit different. So I want you to use your legs and use your arms simply as cables to guide the bar where you want. So basically push into the ground a little bit more. When I bring it up, am I dipping back down even a little bit or am I trying I want, to just- You know what? Great because that's gonna segue into our squat. Yeah. I want you to do anything that your body does naturally. Okay. The only thing that I want you to make sure you do is extend all the way first. Gotcha. Keep the bar close, extend all the way up. Okay. Your heels can come off the ground and everything. We're, we're taking off the e-brake and we're unleashing freak athleticism to the world. There you go. I know it's gonna feel weird when you kind of raise your butt up like that, but. Right there, good. Okay, do it again. Keep that bar nice and close to the body and just be patient, just be smooth. Wait for that bar to get all the way to the hip. Okay, again. More legs still. Still more legs, yep. Smooth doesn't mean stop in the middle. Keep pulling. Hey, there you go, do you feel that? Yeah, feel the bar just fly up there? Yeah. That was a lot faster. You almost hit yourself in the forehead too, so there's that. But you didn't. I shouldn't have even said that. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay, put it down. Yeah. So that will come with time. This is one video in an instant. We're not filming this over weeks and months of your training and your skill development. Yeah. But your ability to be, first of all, it's just confidence. Like obviously you could, if I was just like, Mark, pick that bar up and throw it through the ceiling. You could do that. Right. So when I kind of remind people of that, when I see them getting like way too cognitive with every centimeter of the movement and they're like, eh, eh, I might just say, you know what? Jump on that box 
jump as high as you freaking can right now, or I'll yeah. take them to a trap bar and just grab that bar and jump as high as you can to like reset. It's like, okay, you're an athlete again. So it's, it, there's, a, there's a fine balance between still remembering all the cues and your brain's probably mush right now and still just kind of you know, letting your body do its thing. But you were, it was already starting to happen. So I want you to do that again and I want you to uh, allow your body to go under the bar a little bit. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if I'm thinking about just trying to keep the bar super close that's throwing me up. Maybe my elbows, we'll see. It's all, well, that's the thing, it's all of it, right? Yeah. And so that's why I don't want to bombard you with too many more cues. But same thing, keep the bar close, jump. Okay. That was an actual jump, I don't know if that's. Did that feel different? I mean, it probably felt a little bit lighter than some of the other ones. I don't know if it felt better per se. Okay. Did the pull feel like you were missing something? It probably didn't extend all the way. Yeah. You think, because I said jump, you get excited, and then you jump literally from the ground, and yeah. now the bar is away from your body. Yeah. So, patient, get it to your hip, then jump. There you go, now jump up. That was a perfect pull, you just didn't extend. Don't worry about moving your feet. Your feet will move naturally. That was my max, max vertical jump. That's, a, that's, that's the other thing too, is people think, oh, I gotta be fast, and they just move their feet, yeah. but they don't actually change their body. Okay. Get all the way up. Get tall at the top. Better. Again. One more. Remember our muscle snatch. Jump. Good. That one felt a little bit smoother. Yeah. I think maybe I was trying to drive with the elbows a little bit more on the last one. Yeah, put the bar down. Everybody. Everybody, as soon as we switch gears and we do something that resembles the snatch that they have in their mind, which is getting under the bar, things change. They, they forget what they did before and they think about, well, oh, I have to be fast. I have to get under the bar. And what that translated to often and what it translated to you is that instead of getting the bar all the way to your hip crease, like we did, this is the first, very first thing we did. You started bypassing your hip crease and jumped about right here. And now what that creates is space between you and the bar. It also, watch my hips. They don't actually extend all the way. So when we jump, we get that bar into that power position and we literally want to push into the floor. So this is that triple extension. Now, that's a, that's a never ending debate in the weightlifting world. Should you cue extension of the hips, knees and ankles? Should you actually cue it yeah. or should you strive to to remain flat-footed. What I will say is, regardless of what you physically or uh, literally tell somebody to do, when we forcefully extend, our heels come off the ground. So it's not something that you need to think about, it's just something that happens naturally. But now, don't worry, just because I said get under the bar doesn't mean you have to even worry about that. I still want you to find your hip crease, extend all the way up and then whatever happens after that happens. But I want you to extend with force. Where's the acceptable range for going slower for me to start? Meaning like, yeah. if I'm going from here, is it okay? Like, when do I need to really bring that explosive, like just based on what I'm doing? You know, so if I go slow, 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 when do you say, okay, he's here, that's what I need to. You'll develop that over time. So what actually happens, is I don't tell you when that is. We just keep drilling this and you figure it out, but I, but I will give you a guideline and obviously for the people here. If, if you were in this position below the knee, yeah. or uh, let's say actually mid thigh, right, right about here. So the bar, so you, you, you were below the knee. Remember when I had you kind of push yeah. to about right there? Yeah. That's about where you're gonna start the transition to jump. So if you were here, 
and I told you to jump, like if we weren't snatching and I just put you in this exact position and I said jump, yeah. what would you do? You wouldn't do this. You would do that. Yeah. You would reorient to vertical and extend. So that point is about mid-thigh. Okay. But that's just another thing for you to think about. So it's going to feel robotic in the beginning, but that's about where that happens. So what you'll hear coaches say is patience all the way above the knee. Be patient to above the knee. Good. Again, patience to above the knee. There you go. One more. Get it all the way into your hip. Hey, well, that was your best muscle snatch of the day. I think um, for me right now, trying to keep my toes actually on the ground was helpful as yeah. opposed to jumping, but the act of thinking about jumping. Exactly. Exactly. So it's the intent to jump. Yeah. But what physically might happen is you might not leave the ground just yet. Because if we think about an actual snatch, if you're floating in the air, now it's just a race between you and the barbell. Yeah. So, or against gravity, right? It's like whoever wins. A skilled weightlifter will, well, I call it jumping into the floor, not necessarily in the air. They will jump into the floor and then they will jump down to the floor. But there is, is as little as possible them floating in the air off the ground with the barbell where both are just kind of floating and, and rising together. Because again, gravity is gonna act both at the, at the same rate. Yeah. So that is exact, that's the exact cue. Your feet are gonna move naturally. We would work on that over time and develop that over time, which will develop your squat stance, which will give you the confidence to know where to put your feet. But I, I would much rather you jump into the ground, stay connected to the floor, because that tells me that you're applying force to the ground all the way up through the extension. If you jump too early, like you were doing before, you're no longer applying force to the bar. And we just gotta hope that you've applied enough force to the bar that it's high enough to go over your head. Yeah, like, I mean, I don't know what it looked like from a side pro profile, but obviously from my perspective, the bar felt the lightest yes. going overhead. Exactly, it'll feel weightless. When you hit that, it's like, a, I don't play golf. When you hit that perfect golf swing, and the, ball, and the ball goes straight, and you're like, oh God, I'm hooked again. I was about to quit the sport forever. That's exactly what hitting that, that, that barbell snatch, that perfect clean and jerk, it, it feels easy, it feels weightless. And you're not trying, you're just like, I didn't try. It's like, wow, PR. So that's, that's perfect. Now, that is the pull, I mean, you're snatching. So there's no rule in weightlifting that you have to squat. You could go into a competition right now, You've got judges, you've got two judges on the side, you've got an official in front of you. All they're looking at, well, they're looking at several things. But as long as you fixate that bar and your elbows lock out in, in uh, first contact, and what I mean by that is what you don't do is receive the bar here with bent elbows and then go, Meh! it's called a press out. Yeah. So they'll say no lift. But as long as you, Fixate the bar and your elbows are extended, they don't care how squat, how low you squat. Squatting is out of necessity because the heavier the bar gets, the less high you can pull it. So if you can pull your body down lower and fixate the bar over your head, then you win. So it's a skill, it comes from necessity, it's not a requirement. But if you want to get better at this, you want to have some fun, you want to maximize your potential, learning how to overhead squat and receive the bar in a full squat is beneficial. So let's work on the squat. All right, now we will talk about what everybody's actually been wanting us to talk about, which is the overhead squat. How to develop your Instagram worthy overhead squat. And we've got our trusty dad rod. By the way, if you go to a weightlifting gym and you work with a coach, the first thing you look for in a weightlifting coach is if they walk around with a PVC pipe or a dowel rod. And if they do, 
you know that they know their stuff. So, whoa. So, we established your overhead position, right? Yeah. Your lens with your overhead squat, no matter what we do with all this stuff, is my overhead position is priority number one. I maintain that and allow my body to squat as deep as I can, maintaining that position. And then we will set you up. We will give your body some help in order to get more depth if you need it. So that's gonna be the idea. But remember what I said before, we're not sacrificing your overhead position or changing that position for the sake of getting a deeper squat. Good? Good. Okay. Yep. Sorry, I don't mean to lecture you, man. No, I'm good, that's okay. good. So show me, actually let's step here, give you some space. And I like to just have people just demonstrate what they, what their current mental model combined with their current physical capability is without a whole lot of cueing. So let's establish the overhead position that we talked about. And how could you do that? What if you forget, right? Find the middle, exactly. Go to the extremes, find the middle. And if you've got a coach, they can kind of push on it like we did before. And we've all kind of got our like visuals of what we think the overhead position would be. So when I look at this, I kind of, yeah, I kind of like that right there a little bit better. But that's just my OCD as a coach, push up, good. I often f find that when they're poking the golf ball forward like that, it, it tends to get worse as they go down into a squat and they end up pushing that bar back, 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 and they lose it behind. So if we can put that golf ball on the tee, so to speak, tuck that away, there it is, and then just push straight up from there. Yeah, little shrug. Oh yeah, oh yeah, baby, that looks good. Okay, now let's turn a little bit this way, an eighth turn as we established before, and let's squat. Hey man, all right. Might need to go a little bit narrower for me. Do whatever, so, you know, what's your constraint? Everybody probably knows in the audience, but. Yeah, I, I feel, it, if I go wide, I feel it on my hip. Well, what do you have in your hip? Total hip replacement. You have metal, metal. exactly. Yeah. So, now, will we also think about longer term, relax for a second, that's fine. But over time, if you wanted to train the, the snatch, we will, may, what may happen is you find a middle ground where you don't go so wide that it hurts your hip, but it will al allow you to put force into the ground and your feet kind of move naturally. Like your feet are going to want to go wider when you really extend into the floor and rip yourself under the bar, like over time as you get better at this skill. Um, for right now, we'll say, put your feet wherever you want without sacrificing your overhead position. Yeah. But if I, you, yeah. I was gonna say, I think there is room for improvement because I said I didn't practice my positioning for this video at all. I don't do a lot of squatting, so I'm sure if I- Yeah, bilateral squatting. Practice it yeah. more, it'll feel better over time. I do more split squats. What is, how does it feel with, uh, like experimenting with toe angle. Cause that's often, it doesn't have to be a lot, maybe yeah. 15 degrees. If you try yeah. that. And so same thing. First of all, your overhead squat, I mean, is already better than a lot of, you know, probably people watching this or like what they think. That looks pretty darn good. So come back up. So we have to try to predict whether that's gonna be a sustainable position or not. And we really don't know until we get a bar, until we get weight over your head. Because do that one more time. I want you, everyone, to watch the barbell in relation to his feet, in relation to his center of mass. Now, we started with the bar over his upper back, over his midfoot. As he descends, that bar starts to drift forward. If there was weight on that bar, would he be able to hold it? Yeah, he might need to, right, come back up. But what do we say? We don't sacrifice the position of your shoulder to accommodate how deep you go. Right. We go as deep as you can hold your position. So let's do that one more time. And we're gonna go super slow. And I'm gonna pause you when I start to see that bar drift. And it's really gonna suck because you're gonna have to hold that position. All right. Okay. Remember my cue, keep pushing up. Oppose my force up here, up, straight up. Yeah, pause, good. Bring those hips under the bar, a little forward. Right there, good, yeah, yeah, yeah. Push up, go down a little lower. Keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing. Ooh, baby. You're, you got a good poker face, because I know this is brutal. Now stand back up. It burns. It yeah. burns yeah, nice. But that, that type of deliberate practice with just the PVC, 
there's, I say PVC, dowel rod, whatever we, you know, the cost is so minimal from like a recovery standpoint, but the gains of just comfort, the, the positional development, you're sweating from nothing, from a no weight, but it's good, useful, hard work. And it's going to, it's going to give you the confidence to say, I've been there before with an, a stable overhead position. I can do that with weight. It's just a matter of maintaining it and, and holding my position. Let's do that one more time. Yeah. And the, and the, they don't know, but that's, that feels like max effort. Hell, really yeah, 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 yeah. Cause everything is working to yeah. hold that position. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm giving him a, a straight down force. That's really good work. That is fantastic. Stand back up. Beautiful. That, that looked different than the first couple where you were almost the same depth, but that bar was basically over the front of your nose. So probably unsustainable to add load. And so as a coach, you're kind of predicting, okay, it kind of looks good with a dowel rod, but like, is that going to be sustainable? Is that going to hold up over load? So kind of the, the meaner we can be here in the beginning, the less that that is going to change anything when we add weight. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, if somebody can, I still maybe would for you, give them some constraints to uh, change their center of mass, give them a bit of a buffer, uh, some slack in the system. And what I mean by that is, number one, we can have a target to shoot for. So it could be a med ball, it could be a, a box. And I like to, if it's a box, I like to have it kind of catty corner like this. So you can stand with the corner of the box in between your feet, and then you can just aim straight down for the box, as opposed to being to the side like this. We tend to kind of sit back, which is fine for just a regular squat. But when that bar is overhead, the counterbalance is not going to work. Um, so the box can be a cue for you to just sit straight down. It's like aim your tailbone straight to the box. In addition, we can add heel elevation. Now he's got weightlifting shoes. His heel is already elevated. Had we taken those off and you were barefoot, we would have done the exact same thing. You just may not have been able to achieve the same depth as fast as you did. It would just take a lot more uh, coaxing of your body and more sweat and, and tears over time to be able to hold the same position. But the cues wouldn't change. Now we can add even more heel elevation to his already elevated heels just to really give him that sense of what it's like to be vertical, what it's like to be down in a squat with a stable overhead position. And then we can take away these constraints over time and develop that position. So just for the sake of uh, showing people what I'm talking about, and you can change kind of the orientation of those, of those change plates. These are just two and a half pound plates, just maybe a three quarters of an inch extra. For transparency, Quinn said, I didn't need to worry about buying shoes, but I bought these shoes specifically for this video. He did. He did. <laughs> By the way, it's not, yeah, you just need to wear shoes if you're going to wear with me, but they help. It's kind of like, you know, a soccer player wears cleats, track and field athletes wear spikes. So it's just, it's just, it's the equipment that helps supplement the sport. Beautiful. Oh, fantastic. Now that's easier. Yeah. It's yeah. Okay. There's nothing wrong with that though. Like that is what we're striving for. So if you can, if you can press save in your mind and say, okay, this is what it feels like to be all the way down there for my torso to be relatively vertical for my hips. And I was telling you that in the moment while you were like fighting for your life. So, so that was bad on my part to try to cue you something new in the midst of all that stress. But what I said earlier about getting your hips under the bar was that yeah. orienting the axis of the hips back underneath the barbell as much as you can. It's going to drive those knees forward. It's going to drive your hips under the bar so you can be a little bit more vertical, which is what this extra heel elevation allows you to do. So let's do that again without the box. Mm. So now what would you reduce? Would you take away the box first? Would you reduce the height of the plates? I don't care. Six one way, half dozen the other. Just pick one. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. There's no right or wrong here. We already know he can squat, so I'm just going to take the box away. Good. Pause for a second. Just, you know, just for the sake of me feeling like I have power. There you go. All right. So squat again. Fantastic. Now, if I make a rule of thumb, if I snapshot him 
from here up, I shouldn't know whether he's in the bottom of a squat or he's standing. It should look the same. And I feel like it does stand up. How's that feel? Good. That's yeah. beautiful, man. Yeah. If we could just like airbrush like 315 on there and then moving magic. Scream, but it was just like an effortless smile. That would be fantastic. Um, okay, let's take the heels away. I'll do this in an entire session. What, look at their overhead squat, give them a little bit of a constraint to, to give them some uh, slack, and then take it away to say, okay, you felt what that was like. That's our ideal. Just try to recreate that as best you can now. You know what? You know what you just did though? Yeah, it's like every rep matters. He, he, he put that bar and, and swung it away from him like this, like a jump, like an inverted jump rope. There we go. It's like, you know better than that. You just gotta shame them. Hey man, come on now. You all see this. Everybody sees this. What? All right, stand back up. Fantastic. Fantastic. That's pretty good. The big crescendo here. We're gonna end with Mark snatching from the floor with some weight and uh, allowing his body to pull under the bar as, as far as he can. Now, is he gonna be able to recreate that beautiful Instagram worthy overhead squat with the bar while we're integrating the pull also, giving him more things to think about? Maybe not. So if you, if you receive the bar wherever you receive it, if your, if your body puts on the e-brakes for whatever reason, find your balance, pause, get your squat in. Don't let yourself off the hook is what I tell people. So I don't care what happens. Once the bar's over your head, reestablish your positions, go down. You just make it a habit. Over time, your body will start to do it naturally, okay? Yep. So let's reestablish your snatch grip, and we'll go from that mid-shin position, which is mimicking where the bar would be when we pull from the floor. And now there's gonna, I'm gonna shut up, because there's gonna be a million things going through your mind right now. Okay. And then squat? Yep. Hey, we're pretty good, man. Okay. Let's do it again. Oof. It's like one rep. <laughs> Use your legs to get that bar over your head. Remember how you felt it weightless before? Try to recreate that. There you go. You're snatching, my friend. Push up. Yeah, good. Nice. Let's do a, a little eighth turn. Just the, yeah, there we go. Same thing. That was perfect. And I'll, then I'll let you rest. Yes. Dude, beautiful. Oh, oh yeah. All right, rest for a second. So what happened there? You were great, you were great, and then you were like, I wanna go lower. And then what happens is sometimes low is too low and it dumps us backwards. Yeah. And what we have to do to counterbalance that is the bar goes forward, but that's okay. That's, that was fantastic, man. I mean, that you're snatching. That is a snatch. What makes it better is you receiving the bar and not having to stand up and reorient yourself, you just receive the bar and you go right into your overhead squat. And then you do that with heavier and heavier weight and you're able to get down faster and lower and you're able, that bottom position that you show us, yeah. you're able to get there at a moment's notice in control, putting that bar and your body where you want with a really heavy weight. But that's just more of what you're already, that's just more that's further down the line. There's nothing different about that versus what you just did. This is the foundation. Do you, want to, do you want to hit a PR, 65 pounds Let's from the floor? It. Okay. These are, these are 100 kilo plates each. I would do 225, but I don't want to make anybody You're probably home tired. feel bad. I feel you. Know? you. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. I get it. So we'll do 65. Let's go ahead and put clips on this, on this bad boy. Not because I think the weights are going to fly off, but these 10s, tend to get kind of floppy and it and it kind of feels weird pulling from the floor. So I, I do like to use clips with these with these thinner plates because now the bar will just sit like it would even with the heavier weight. Um, so what should, now that we have 20 more pounds on the bar, what should change? Nothing. 
Nothing. But it might. But it but it might, and it and if it does, you've got 27 million more reps to do until you die. So we'll get it right. Good. Hey, look at that. And you know what's funny, and people will put it, go ahead and put it down. People will say this a lot, is they actually, it actually feels a little bit better and like they're more easily able to, to hit a squat when there's some weight on the bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I felt Did like- you sent that, sense that too? Yeah. Even with just the, with the bar, yeah, it was easier to get a little bit lower. The depth, obviously it was harder to maintain the shoulder stability and stuff. Yeah, but. yeah, yeah. But, and why would that be? Maybe it's, you know, just enough weight to get some feedback. You feel the floor a little bit more. You actually feel what you're pushing against. Obviously there's diminishing returns because if we just stack on more and more, then, you know, things are going to degrade a little bit. But that's also another reason to not just have somebody living with a PVC pipe and a dowel rod for months on end. Um, you're, you're handicapping them a lot of times for no reason. You'll see improvements very quickly if you add a little bit of load while you're still coaching positions. Let's do it one more time and, and we'll call it good. Use your legs. Good. Beautiful squat. Now I'm, I, I lied, and I because I want you to uh, I want you to improve upon one thing. We've got room for improvement upon one thing. Is elbows? Yeah. What you're doing is you're starting to turn your elbows over. Yeah. Like at your belly button. Yeah. And then it becomes kind of a press from there, but we lose that active pulling under the bar if we're too early. If we're kind of like here with the barbell, like pressing from our belly button. So legs, elbows. Remember your, cable, your, your arms are just towing cables. Yeah, that's it right there. Good. You forgot to find your hip, but that's, that's okay. Nice, okay, good, rest. And so we'll call it there. What, and that's a perfect example of you're thinking about something else. You're thinking about one thing, something else kind of goes away a little bit in your mind. And then you go, oh, bring your attention back to that. And that's what cueing is, right? You're just, you can't focus on so many things at once. And so you're gonna ingrain a lot of these skills are gonna chunk that you're not gonna have to think about a lot of this stuff. And then we can think about more higher level things of like pulling down, yeah, pulling down faster, where your feet land and all these little nuances that don't matter right now. But you just snatched. All right. So from beginning to start to end, you can now snatch. You have the knowledge to go into any gym and do exactly what we just did and be snatching. Congratulations. Feels good. And two things that I wanna point out, Quinn, is like, one, one of the reasons I wanted to do this video, like I said, is usually videos are titled for beginners, but every repetition looks perfect. And with this, you were, cueing me or letting me figure out my mistakes along the way, which is probably more realistic for a lot of beginners. And then this is probably feels like a long video. Obviously, this is just a small snippet of, of what you teach. And I know you teach like a two day weightlifting course. Probably a lot more for me to learn over the course of months, years, a lifetime. It's a never ending journey. Yeah. But this, I mean, what you just witnessed here is essentially the course. It's, it's establishing the base positions. And then from there, it's just practice. Like being fast, lifting heavier weight is not something that's different from what we just did. It's just you now no longer having to think about all that stuff that we just did. And now you can just think about being fast and aggressive. So we bring back the whole like actual kind of athleticism portion of it where right now we're in this very cognitive stage. But it's, it's, it's a never ending journey. I mean, ask any elite, elite weightlifters. They're constantly tinkering with their technique and, the, and their performance. And they're constantly trying to kind of innovate themselves as an athlete. It's, it's like any skill in any endeavor. It never ends. And that's kind of the fun of it. So people want to learn more from you, about you. Where do they go? Uh, they can go to Clinical Athletes on Instagram, clinicalathletes.com. Um, and they can message me 
directly on those platforms as well. Cool. We'll link that, Quinn. Thanks for teaching me how to snatch today. Absolutely. You did great, man. Appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to hit that like button, follow Quinn, and we're going to have him back in another video. So peace.